and I'm the dietitian at the Fulte County Medical Center in McConnellsburg. Okay, they asked us to come over and um, to talk about nutrition. So I thought that one thing that I would talk about is every single one of us in this room has at least one bad eating habit, right? Right? No? Yeah? Okay. So think about what your number one bad eating habit is. And if you want to, why don't you share it with me? So what do you think is your number one bad eating habit? Yes. What is it? Pepsi. Coke. Okay. Soda. Soda. Sugar sweetened soda. Oh my goodness, there's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. What's another bad habit that you can think of? That you have? Too much pizza. I can imagine. Is that, was she selling pizza back there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. She ran out. She ran out. Wow. She ran out of pizza. Okay. All right. What's another bad habit that we have? Fast food. All right. Any other ones? Okay. I think one of my weaknesses is I like um, chips. You know, I like, if I have a sandwich, I think I have to have something crunchy, don't I? I do. I have to have either potato chips or or you know, cheese curls or something like that. Fritos, I've just got to have something. So that's my bad habit. So what can we do about it? Well, there are things that we can do about it, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about at lunch today. Okay? So how do we kick our bad eating habits? Okay? The number one way to um, help kick some bad eating habits are to eat breakfast. Now, how many of you eat breakfast? Raise your hand. Okay? A good many of you? A good many don't, though. Okay? What do you think is the most important meal of the day? Okay? Breakfast is because what we are doing is we are breaking the fast. All right? So it's really important that we eat a breakfast because that kind of wakes us up, gets our metabolism going, that's our energy, and that can get us through the rest of the day. Now one thing I wanted to go over before I started into this talk is um, just to kind of get you thinking about this. When it comes to eating healthy, what percentage of people do you think don't want to give up the foods that they like to eat healthy? What do you think? Out of 100%, think about it. Is that one of the things that everybody says, that if I eat healthy, then I can't eat the foods that I like? How many agree with that? Think that that's true? Actually, 82% of the people feel that they have to give up something, they have to give up their foods to be able to eat healthy. And you know what? My thought process is, is you know, the soda's okay, everything is okay. Where we get into trouble is in the amount of soda that we're drinking, okay? A better choice than a two liter bottle of soda would be a 12 ounce can of soda and a two liter bottle of water. That would be a better choice for us because the soda if soda is one of your um, unhealthy bad is one of your bad habits, all that that soda is giving you is calories and sugar. It's not giving you anything else. Okay. All right. What percentage of people do you think don't eat fruits or vegetables at least twice a day? Do you think it's fifty percent of the people? Sixty, seventy, eighty. What do you think? 62, actually that's pretty close, about 68 of the people, 68% um, don't eat fruits or vegetables at least twice a day. How about you guys, think about what you eat. Do you eat fruits and vegetables? Do you get three servings of fruit in a day? Do you get at least three or two, two or three servings of vegetables every day? Okay, those are things that we need in our diet to be healthy. 
okay? 62% of the population feels that they have no time to, to pay attention to what they're eating. Do you agree with that? Sometimes you think that we're so busy. How many of us are so busy that, you know, we get home and we try to get something to eat and we just grab what's ever there? Okay? Because we're just too busy. All right? About 60% of us juggle both work, family, and like to prep, prep our meals in 15 minutes or less. How many of you think about what you're, how many of you know what you're having for supper tonight? Raise your hand. How many of you? Not a lot of you know what you're going to have for supper. When we don't plan ahead and think, and think ahead, we have a tendency to not sometimes not make healthy choices. All right? And then 36% of the people, or 36%, claim that they have no leisure time for any type of physical activity. Okay? What do you think about that? think that that's true? How many of you take time to do some physical activity and work out? Okay? We need that physical activity. Okay? That's because, and believe it or not, I've heard every excuse, but believe it or not, you get more energy from working out than not working out. I was watching some, some shows on TV. It doesn't mean, you know, when we used to think about working out, the recommendations were always, you know, 30 minutes most days. Now they're saying that if you do as little as 10 minutes or 5 minutes, the health benefits are still there. The 10 hours. <laughs> but the thing of it is, what's different is your body is used to this in here, okay? If you're always on your feet, because I hear it all the time, well, I'm on my feet all the time, you know, and I do a lot of physical labor. And your body adjusts to that, your body gets used to that. Okay? You still need to try to make an attempt to get out and do something else cardio-wise. Okay? Something for your heart to be able to get out and exercise for a, um, an extended period of time. Okay? So I just thought that those percentages were interesting. Um, so now to just kind of get back to get to healthy eating. Obviously, we talked about it, the first thing is to eat breakfast. You want to keep your body fueled to prevent making unhealthy choices. Because what happens sometimes is when we really get hungry, how many of you really get, you know, you skip a meal and you get really, really hungry and then all of a sudden you're ready to just eat anything that isn't nailed down. Right? Right? I mean, I get like that. All right? So it's really important to eat the breakfast and then that keep, gives you energy and keeps you focused all day. Right? All right? So another thing that um, we didn't really talk too much about it, but another bad habit that um, we seem notorious for is um, the amount of caffeine or coffee that is consumed in a day's time, whether it be in the form of coffee, our sweet tea, our iced tea, our um, the caffeine, actually you think it's giving you more energy, but in the end, it might give you a bolt of energy in the beginning, but then toward the end, once it's weared off, you actually have less energy. So if you want to try to cut back on your caffeine, you should try switching to decaf, half and half, um, and then always drink plenty of water with that. All right, any questions? Okay. All right. So the next thing to do to help beat unhealthy habits is to bring your lunch to work. And I see that a majority of you did bring it. Some of you were pounding on the machines in there, so hopefully it was with something that was good for you. Um, but it really is important to pack, and every meal really should include all the different food groups. Do you guys all know what all the different food groups are? Okay, what do we have? Can anybody tell me one? Tell me a food group. Meat. Meat, a source of protein. What's another food group? Fruit. Dairy. Okay, there's still two more. Vegetables. One more. What? Bread and your grains, okay? So anytime you sit down to a meal, you should really make sure that all those food groups are present in that meal, okay? That gives you with all the nutrients and everything you need. So what's he pointing to? Is he pointing to all his 
You got meat, you got grain, veggies. So you got them all covered, right? A few cupcakes, and, okay? But you got, and you got your fruit, good. All right, so that's a well-balanced diet, right? But now what we also have to be careful of is when we do make those food choices, we have to watch, be wary of the portions, okay? Just because we have meat doesn't mean we should sit down and have a 20 ounce steak, okay? Um, just because we have um, you know, fruit doesn't mean that we should have three cups of fruit. We really need to watch the amount, okay? So how many of you think about your lunches before, how many of you pack like the night before? Is that usually what you do? Or do you wait in the morning and then pack your lunch in the morning? What are you doing? I don't have time for this. No, oh, you look in the morning? Well, a good time to plan is over the weekend. To get your weekend, you know, when we go to the store, kind of plan out your meals. The more you plan, okay, the um, easier it is to make wiser food choices. And never go to the grocery store hungry, though. How many of you have gone to the grocery store hungry? Immediately after work. Yeah. And then you have a tendency to buy all kinds of unhealthy foods. Okay? And then, I don't know, during your break periods, do you guys usually get something to eat or do you just kind of sit? Okay? Try to bring in, you know, healthy snacks, fruits and vegetables, those kinds of foods, rather than going for the high-fat, um, high calorie foods. Okay? All right, eat more fruits and vegetables. We said here that, what was it, 62% of the people? No, 68% of the people don't um, eat fruits or vegetables at least twice a day. Try to incorporate those fruits and vegetables in there. Okay, but just remember that somebody asked in the prior class, you know, um, does fat make you fat? Does, you know, what makes you fat? And what makes you fat or what makes you overweight is by eating more calories than what your body needs. It doesn't matter if there is no fat in that food. It doesn't matter if it's the best food in the world for you. If, it, if it's more than what your body needs, you're going to store it as fat. So if all I ate in a day's time was broccoli and I had 3,000 calories worth of broccoli, which is more than what my body needs, I'm going to store that broccoli as fat. So what you really want to do is you want to balance your diet with a variety of foods and keeping it within what your body needs, okay? The more colorful the fruits and vegetables are, the better they are for you. There's all kinds of new fruits and vegetables, I don't know, that are, that are out on the market now. Don't be afraid to try some of those things. Um, you know, I remember when kiwi came on, um, you know, in the grocery stores, and mangoes, and papayas, and those kinds of things. Give those a try. There's lots of color. There's lots of um, nutrients in those foods. Okay? Um, if you can't get the fresh fruits and vegetables, go with the frozen fruits and vegetables. Okay? Try to stay away from the can, only because they're loaded with um, preservatives in it. So you really want to try to go with the fresh as best you can. But those... Um, I saw you had some micro microwaves back there. You know those steam and fresh vegetables? That's a great thing to do. Put them in the microwave for a couple minutes. You got some hot steamed great vegetables for you. The more colorful the better, okay? Cook your dinner at home. You know, plan ahead. It really does take time to be able to eat healthy, but if you plan ahead, you can do it, okay? Um, make it easy. Use your pre-cut frozen vegetables. You know, um, or if you don't, when you go to the store and you're putting your groceries away, clean those vegetables right away. Have them ready for you in the, in the refrigerator. Okay? So some good ideas for breakfast. Okay? That, I mean, there's a, a whole slew of things that you can do. Um, varies with low-fat cottage cheese and a high-fiber cereal. The fiber will sustain you for longer periods of time versus like a, um, a refined type of um, cereal. Um, English muffins with peanut butter. Again, make sure at every meal that you have each of the food groups there. Make sure you have a source of protein. It doesn't always have to be meat. It could be peanut butter. Um, it could be cheese. 
Um, whole grain cereals with low fat milk. I, I saw a recipe the other day, I haven't tried it, whereas, you know, oatmeal, there's a lot of good health qualities about oatmeal. But who has time to make a cup of oatmeal in the morning? So I saw a recipe where you take your yogurt and you add the yogurt to the dry oatmeal, you put it in your refrigerator, and then in your morning you have an oatmeal parfait. Might be worth a try. That's a great way to do it and nice and easy. And then put some fruits in there. You got it made. Okay? Um, and then, you know, even hard boiled eggs or scrambled eggs, um, you know, are good sources of protein and they'll sustain you over a period of time. Okay? So those are some quick tips for breakfast that can be helpful to keep you on track to eating healthy. Okay? Your quick tip for lunch. Um, I didn't see too many salads in here. I did see some salads. You know, try to have a salad and load it up with your lean cuts of meat. Um, try to use as little salad dressing as you possibly can. Um, you know, when you eat out, when you're going out, look at the appetizers. Try to use an appetizer as a meal. Um, or else go out with somebody and split an entree or, sh or share an entree. Um, like I said, it goes back to the fact that sometimes it's not what we eat, it's the amount that we eat. Our portions are just way too big. Okay? And lastly, for dinner, you know, quick tips for dinner when you're getting home and you want to um, prepare something that's healthy, use those pre-cut vegetables. Or cut your own once, like I said, once you buy them and you take them to the store. Buy your, um, clean them up and have them ready. So all you have to do is just get them out and, and chop them up. Use a slow cooker. Everybody have a crock pot? Yeah, use those. Again, it takes a little bit of planning, but isn't it great when you do use your crock pot and you get home and dinner's ready? No? Yeah? I know, I like it that way. Okay? Um, utilize leftovers. You know, I like to make a big crock pot of stuff and then use it um, for my lunches and leftovers. Um, extra vegetables and stir fry, um, meatloaf, spaghetti, those kinds of things. And then use your frozen fruits for dessert. Okay? So those are just ways with a little bit of planning you can take those bad habits and turn them into good habits. Okay? Are there any questions? No? This group isn't quite as talkative as the last group. So up here I have samples of, um, well, I have pretzels here. And how many of you have ever tried hummus? It's actually chickpeas that have been ground up and um, it's really pretty tasty. So if you're interested in trying this on your way out, help yourself to a packet. Um, this would be what I consider a healthy snack, you know, not high in fat but yet it still has some protein and it has, um, you know, some grains with it. Okay? What? We're talking about hummus. You're talking about hummus? You like hummus? I never tried it. Well, there you go. You'll have to stop by and pick up a container. That's one of the, um, you know, the food trends that is out there now. I use the hummus instead of mayonnaise on my, when I make a sandwich at times. Um, it's a great dip with fresh vegetables. We brought pretzels instead. You know, it's. I guess it, I would use hummus as an alternative to like the cream cheese dip, you know, the veggie dips, those kinds of things. Much more nutritious for you. Okay? Any questions at all about anything nutrition related that I can answer? No? So you guys are all thinking about your bad habit and you're, instead of having a two liter bottle of Soda, we're going to try to cut it to a can and drink more water, right? Right. 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 Right? Right. Okay. I tried. I tried. What can I say? I tried. All right? That's it, unless you have some questions.